in the sense that I control the governmental informational ingestion and egestion process. Uh, Mr Pearson, just to clarify, your job is, is to make sure that the public perception of your government's programme is a positive one, is that fair? It's not, it's not about perception. You know, I, I believe in government as a transceiver. Hmm? Uh, transceiver. Yeah, it's, it's really important, yeah, sure, to, to give out a, a strong signal, but you, to be effective, you've got to listen for an echo. Could you possibly speak in plain English? Sorry, I, 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 thought, I thought I was. So what, what is clear is that you are an important man, Mr Pearson. I'm just a lad from Leeds with a lust for life, yeah. Um, but there's a, a, an African proverb that's, that's stuck with me. Yeah? If you think you're too small to make a difference, you've never spent a night with a mosquito. So part of your job is to make sure that the government's message gets across clearly. Is that right? That's correct. And, and despite the sarcasm marinating that question, I'm very successful in that endeavour. No, there was no sarcasm intended at all, Mr Pearson. Sorry, I must have misread your face. Um, does your job intrude on your home life? No. no when, I, when I close the front door, I, I'm no longer Stuart Pearson. When, when you... I mean, I mean when, I, when I close it from the, from the inside, you know, when I, when I close it from the outside, then, then I, I very much am Stuart Pearson. So who are you at home? Uh, I'm a husband. I'm, a, pardon me, a, a lover. I'm a carpenter. I'm a cook. I'm a flautist. If, uh... A flautist. Yeah. Right. I play the flute. And I dabble on the Irish baran. Um, and would you like to express any uh, remorse for Mr Tickell's death? What would you like to say to his family? Uh, I would like to offer them maximum respect, you know, and maximum remorse, and maximum assurance that Mr Tickell did not die in vain. We're here. You know? How can we make the government and the media inclusive without being intrusive? Yeah. And if we can answer that, at least we can uh, make sure that there are no more Mr Tickells. I mean, I mean that not in the sense of, you know, wiping out the Tickell family name. I mean, in the sense that nothing like this will ever happen again. Hello, Mr Pearson. Um, right. Tab 28 in your bundle there, page 263. Uh, a paper that you presented in 2006, The Iconography of Consensus. Would you care to summarise the argument you present there? Sure, yeah, the, the main... Very thrust... mind Lord Gordon's desire for plainness and clarity. Right, OK. Uh, I um, hypothesise that, sorry, I say that the design structure for a parliamentary democracy should be that of the Pompidou Centre, morally and structurally explicit and open, a, a porous membrane. Maybe just a little bit plainer, Mr Pearson? People should know... Uh, what politicians are doing. Brilliant. Thanks. Government should be porous. Yes. But not leaking. Come on, if, if someone is determined to leak information, there's nothing that anyone can do about that. So as Director of Communications, you are unable to prevent sensitive material being uh, communicated to journalists. If someone chokes on a packet of crisps, do you issue an arrest warrant for Gary Lineker. Well, is it fair to say that you have, in fact, changed nothing and government communications carries on exactly as they did before by leaks and whispers? No, it's not fair to say that. In fact, because you disapprove and condemn these practices, are they not more covert and more hidden and more secret than ever before? I think that is, is also an, an unreasonable assertion. In, in spite of your desire to create a political Pompidou centre, Mr Pearson, haven't you created the opposite centre point? I mean, everybody sees it looming over them, but nobody has the faintest idea what happens in there. I think there's some kind of club on the top floor. So, Mr Pearson, have you identified the source of the leak of no. Mr Tickell's records? No. Have you ever leaked yourself? No. no I, was, I was over that pre-Britpop. Do you have any idea where the leak might have come from? Well, uh, you know, if this was CSI Miami, I guess we'd be looking for the person who'd have most to gain from the leak being made public. Well, uh, despite your shirt, this isn't... CSI Miami, who do you think would benefit most from the leak? Well, I guess I'd be sending David Caruso knocking on the door of Mr Malcolm Tucker. <laughs>